What is up, YouTube? Episode number 13 and lucky 13. Uh, left you guys, I know it's been two months, two months now. Uh, I left you in high build primer, and as you can see here, a lot more fairing and sanding. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and speed through this video and get this boat completed. All right, so what I'm doing is the high build primer fills any of the weave. I mean, this right here is silky smooth. Um, and I can feel there's a spot right there that you can actually see now. I can feel like this right here looks rough, but it's smooth as can be. But you can actually see it right there. I need to sand a little bit more. So I'm knocking off the high build and let me back up. You can see the console, focus. So you can see where I've sanded and cut off a line right here. So if you get in close, let it adjust. Basically you can see the line where I've stopped. And so all of this is still a little rough and obviously I haven't seen any of the green yet, but the top, that right there is pure, just slick, really nice. So. I'm gonna keep working on this thing. I probably should put down some guide coat so I know where I've gone over and then I'll really know. And I can feel like a little bump right there. So we'll see how it all goes. But I mean, again, the whole deck is getting C deck. So it does not have to be perfect other than a finger width on each side. So we're gonna do a finger, we're gonna just knock on all the high build and we'll come back and throw down some finish primer. But the console, obviously, you're going to see the whole thing. So I don't want you to look down this way and see waves in the console because I screwed up. So um, might have to get the fairing board back out to do the console. But everything up top is just going to get knocked down with the 5-inch, uh, 6-inch orbital. Um, so it's all smooth, like, to touch. And that way the C-Deck will adhere better to it and I shouldn't hopefully have any issues. C-Deck, Aqua Traction, Marine Tread, whatever I put down, it shouldn't have any ad uh, adhe adhesion issues. And again, you're only gonna see a finger width, like right here, there's gonna be a finger width gap, if that, between the two mats. So it's not gonna matter that this is exactly perfect. Um, I can actually tell right there, there's a little rise where the two decks joined. So when I sand that, I'm gonna knock down the top a little bit. But again, whole thing's getting C-decked. Console, these boards, and these walls are all you're gonna see. So I'm gonna work really hard on those and make them nice and fair and perfect. Mirror finish, but the top, I can just keep on knocking down with this uh, 220 grit. Get ready to go to finish primer. I've done a full coat of high build, sanded the whole top side with 220 found little spots that I need to fill. There's probably, I don't know, call it 20, 20 little spots. Just fixing, fixing some corners. I mean, that just doesn't look good. Um, there's a little tiny, tiny void. So fixing some real minor stuff. This whole side over here came out really, really nice. The whole front deck came out nice, except for one tiny little bubble. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up a tiny bit of epoxy, or excuse me, so the fairing compound fill these super I mean, you can just see how minor that is but when i go and put white bright shiny beautiful finish paint on this you will see those so i mixed up like two tiny little golf ball sized pieces of fairing compound the blue and yellow um it kicked in about 12 minutes so uh, i was able to get on and fill all the spots that I needed. Extra heavy there, because I'm gonna shape that a little bit more. When I was able to, to pull it thinly where I wanted to, um, but it it's kicking so fast, because it's a million degrees outside, that uh, I think, yeah, like that's already, I mean, it's still sticky, so it's still, it's still not cured. So I'm gonna check it in an hour. Uh, I was planning on just like saying, screw it, shut down for today, and, uh, just sand tomorrow but i have a feeling like these these super like i just put that on like five minutes ago so i know it's not ready but 
Uh, I have a feeling that all this area and this thick piece here is probably going to take longer to cure, but I'm going to come back out in an hour and see, see what we're working with. Um, and might do a little sanding and then that way I can go ahead and get the boat wiped down with acetone with uh, denatured alcohol. I can push it out into the sun and blow this garage out, blow the boat off, wipe it down again, um, and move on to finish primer. It's been a little while since I worked with epoxy, but that, my friends, is a clean fillet. I'll be able to hit that with the uh, belt grinder, sander, whatever. Clean it up real nice before sea deck goes underneath there but um yeah hopefully that's the last fillet i ever have to pull and then it kind of hurts my soul to have put this much compound it's it's a lot but there's an already a nice curvature so when that hardens i'll get to sanding that probably by hand to make that perfect i've got plenty of 60 grit left to knock down a lot um but it should build up that edge just enough so that it's more fluid and less rigid. Um, so we'll get to sanding that tomorrow. I thought it was quite funny. You could tell I've been sanding, because that's white. And that is a, <laughs> a completely green dust covered garage. Gotta have to get clean that up for mommy. And that'll do it. If you've made it this far in the video, no more rough sanding, very, very minimal fairing compound. Here I'm lying down the first two coats of finish primer. Uh, once they cure, go ahead and lay down more guide coat because guess what? You got to sand again. Uh, we're going to get this thing sanded to 320 grit. Make sure everything looks perfect and we're moving on to Alex Seal finish paint. All right, friends, we've got half well i gotta do that once but half of the boat has been sanded with 320 um it is i forgot how nice and smooth this is from when we did the bottom um as you can see there's a little bit of burn through not super concerned this did happen on the bottom when i was doing it and i'll say that with four coats of the blue paint on the bottom um, there are maybe one or two tiny spots where I can see a hint of burn through on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mix up like, I mean, I was doing 16 ounce batches to do the entire top side. So I might do like a four ounce batch and I'm going to reprimer the inside here. Cause again, all decking, um, I'm just going to put some primer over the, the burn throughs that are on the edges like right there and on the inside definitely like right there these i'm not going to worry about because again they're going to get i mean i might that's a pretty significant burn through but this is going to get um all covered so i'll never see it again but spots where i know the c deck is going to there's going to be a little gap which is basically the all the edges um the bilge is pretty good i'm gonna put a little bit right there because there's gonna be nothing on this but yeah, I'm gonna do the inside lip because there's gonna be no sea deck on that and I want that to look really nice. And uh, once I get the whole boat sanded, I'm gonna blow the garage out, wipe it down with denatured alcohol, just run one coat of primer around the inside, let it cure, and then tomorrow we're gonna do finish paint. And I'm going to, I've got one quart of white, so um, divide that by if I want to do four coats on the top, which is probably overkill, but I'm never going to use the paint again. So um, I'm going to do three consecutive coats top side with the white. Wait, I think it's 24 hours. Sand with 400 and then one final coat, and we will get a beautiful finish like that. I'll be able to polish it after a week. And uh, what do you know? Got some more total fare, so I can go ahead and start pulling it on the floor. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish the whole top side from a paint perspective. It's gonna be completely done. And then I'll get to working on the floor uh, on the inside. I've gotta put a little bit more fairing compound right in here. 
get this right, and uh, then I'm gonna go ahead and, again, hand sand this with 320 and then put another coat of the total bilge paint in there uh, but it's it's coming along it's just sand and paint sand and paint one thing I want to talk about in case you didn't watch my other videos where we were painting the bottom of the boat um, and these trays are awesome just I ordered like a 15 pack or whatever it is on Amazon no there's 22 in there so I'll link all the stuff that I use to paint <clears throat> but for the primer we used Alexi or Alexio uh, yacht coatings this stuff is not cheap but it is really really good and just so you know it was one part primer one part converter so basically I would do if I was doing 16 ounces it'd be eight ounces and eight ounces and then I would splash in um, you know like an ounce and a half which would be roughly 20 percent uh reducer which helps roll everything out now that's why the primer as you can see goes on pretty clear not clear but pretty light almost see-through when we do the paint what we're going to do is we're going to use this beautiful top coat cloud white top coat um, converter which doesn't feel like i have very much because So it's two parts paint, one part converter, one part reducer, and then a cap full of this magical stuff right here, which is the roller additive. This is what makes the paint, uh, all the bubbles in the paint come out to the surface and pop. So that way, when you go ahead and um, lay everything down, it looks super, super smooth. So for painting this first coat of final top coat, white on top. I'm going to do eight ounces of uh, the premium white cloud white top coat, four ounces of converter, four ounces of reducer. Uh, but the process is eight ounces and four ounces. You let that sit for 15 minutes, stir in four ounces of reducer, and then a cap full of this roll additive, and then you're ready to roll. So we're going to go ahead and get that mixed up 15 minutes. I'm gonna clean my mohair red tree rollers. Uh, I got more of these coming, as you can see, I've only got two left. So I gotta clean those up with some tape and we're gonna move on to top coat finish paint. Uh, I've got a quart of white, so that divided by four would be eight ounces each. So I'm gonna do four coats, three coats, uh, let them cure, three coats every, basically a coat every 12 to 20 hours. Uh, and then let them cure for a couple days and then we'll sand with 400 and then put the final fourth coat on. Uh, Cause what you see now, other than the console that's white is the only part that's gonna be white. Everything inside and the console is going to be blue like the holes. Here we go. And as expected, that Alex seal just does its thing, man. So I mixed eight ounces of paint four ounces of converter and three ounces of reducer. I didn't want it to reduce too much. Put in a cap full of that rolling additive. And yeah, it's uh, it was so much, it's actually too much paint really. Uh, I, almost, I did almost the entire boat twice, um, which makes me happy because I'm only putting the white on the top. So by doing three coats this way, which is essentially, we'll call it five total coats on the top, gives me a little buildup. So when I go to sand with 400, I'm not experiencing any burn through. And then when I do the final and fourth coat, it uh, it should really do well. But I mean, for the first coat of white, yeah, you can see there's a little burn through like it was before, but it's just so nice. That wet paint look. And it's starting to, I mean, it's, I started looking at rigging and a steering wheel and all that jazz today, I mean, we are almost there. Third and final coat is down. Looks incredible. As you can see, I wasn't really happy with the insides and I got about four and a half ounces of paint, which this whole top side only took six ounces. So I'm going to sand on the inside because you're going to see those kicker blurs again. I'm going to sand those with uh, 320 paint, 400 paint 600 and then one final coat of paint so hopefully two ounces of paint each just to rip around the inside there and get those 
super perfect. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's top side's awesome. I'm very happy with it. This paint is just hardening out real nice, and it's gonna be perfect when it comes time to put the uh, C deck or deck it down. All right, I gotta be extra careful now that I got the top deck done, but put in this another coat of bilge paint and all of the hatch drains and the actual bilge. So it looks white again. I just read on the bottle, of course, after I painted, that um, you're not supposed to use this stuff when it's above 90% humidity or 90 degrees. And guess what? It's like 100 something outside right now. Uh, I'm gonna pull back the tape. We'll hopefully see this dry. If I have to put a third coat on, I have enough. Uh, I've got about a third of that can left, which I'm hoping I can roll out. I'm gonna clean all these with soap and water on the inside, and then hopefully be able to roll out another coat uh, to make that look nice. If not, I'm gonna order some more. Uh, got in 25% more putty. Uh, I think I'm gonna stop laying putty and sand all that smooth because as you can see right there, there's some imperfections in the fiberglass that are preventing me from pulling nice long even pulls and that's just going to create gunk and build up and more work. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that uh, and then once I get all of the sides done we'll come back when it's time for primer. So I'm not going to bore you with me sanding and repetitive sanding and fairing and sanding and fairing. So hopefully that'll only take me a couple days. All right so this afternoon we are getting hinges and these three hatches done, installed, finished, finito, done. Uh, I already sanded this with 600 grit. So this is really, really smooth. Um, and it's gonna get a final, final, final coat. I also had to do some touch up on this piece right here because I had some paint run for my initial, uh, initial paint job the first couple coats so i sanded both of these and that inside kicker board uh, which i'm going to put the very last final coat of white and then that can of paint is done um but the whole point of this little video here is don't ever throw away stuff so this right here is my acrylic windshield from a cv well these hinges right here are like 12 bucks a pop these gas shocks are like 30 something dollars. So what I'm doing is repurposing them. As you can see, I've got it screwed to the workbench and I drilled two new holes to make that a shorter attachment because it's gonna fit perfect. As you can see, I've kind of been test fitting it off to fill that with silicone, but uh, I need it to lower just a little bit so I can screw it in. It's gonna hold this hatch open and uh, I'm still gonna put some weather stripping on the top of this hatch lid right here so it doesn't slam. But uh, yeah, it's gonna hold the hatches about, yay, 90 degree angle, which is gonna be really, really nice. And then it'll have a compression. So all I gotta do is just hit the switch, hit the latch right there and it'll lift up itself. Um, so I'm gonna basically take these two screws out, flip this around and screw it in here and use my grinder to cut off this flange. So it's only gonna be about that big. Once that's done, I'll be able to screw it back in and all of the hatches in the boat will have gas shocks in them to the tune of about $250 worth of hardware that I just so happen to have laying around from the other boat. Don't throw stuff away. And just like that, it's almost 90 degree, which I'm okay with. Um, since I shortened the height of the pen right there. Still be able to access that plenty well, so I'm happy with it. I bought some PEX attachments, drilled out every single hatch, even the three in the back. I uh, have the holes drilled out now, I got a vacuum up here, but what I need to do is mix up some neat epoxy, epoxy these holes back. 
so that the wood is protected. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone life seal in there. Smash those up in there. Once they dry up, I'll get some more bilge paint, paint them in. Uh, put hatch strips in. Uh, the switch lights came in, which these are pretty sweet little push button switches, which I think I'm gonna put right there. Uh, so hatch tape and then dad coming in clutch with the special bits. So what I'm gonna do is on these holes, I'm going to grind out kind of a, almost a concave similar to that angle. So when I put these down, I'm maximizing the amount of drainage hole that's actually being used. So we're really close, I'm just doing some little things. I'm gonna wire up the front lights today. Wire these guys up, run them, screw them in. Again, need epoxy the holes and everything. Uh, get wiring into the console for those. I guess you just gotta go really slow. There's another bark on my freaking paint. All right. Perfect. That lines up nicely. I can through bolt that. Still put a pad right here for like, I don't know, keys or, or whatever, or magnet for lures, but this is gonna have a chrome cap on top and then it'll be through bolted underneath the console. Sweet. And so like I was saying, you can see I put some guide code on the console and on the walls so I can sand those, but uh, as I sanded this top here, the, the paper kept getting all gunked up and I think that's because the paint hasn't, or the, the high build primer hasn't feel fully cured for 24 hours. So we're gonna let it go and cure, but I figured I got some time since I can't really do anything with that. I could work on the front hatch and I said, well, shoot, let me go ahead and run the wiring and wire up the nav lights, which you can see are pretty darn bright. And uh, I'm actually really happy. They put out quite a bit of light. These are the Lavorsi. I think that's how you say them. Super low profile, small head, um, but wired those up. They look really nice. Obviously I gotta put them onto the breaker and then the switch, but just wanted to get those in there because that was a hole in the boat and I was worried about if I wanna go launch the boat just to see how it sits. Don't need to get any water in it. And I still gotta put a, a fitting over this to lock that, but Wire comes up through my chase in the console. I'm gonna go ahead and roll it up and zip tie that into a roll on the floor so I can continue to paint in there when the new paint arrives. But yeah, we've got a red and green nav. I'm pretty happy. Trimmed out ink. Gonna get the live oil lid built. All right, walls are all sanded. 220 grit, super smooth. As you can see, uh, that high build primer really just starts to eat and gum up the pads. I mean, once it gets like this, it's useless pretty much. I mean, I, I mean that stuff, it's not coming off. Oh, there it goes, but either way, it's way quicker to just change pads. That's like 15 bucks worth of pads. Uh, gonna go ahead and get this floor sanded down and uh, gonna rough sand underneath the edges here to get that just right, clean her up, and we're gonna put down some primer this afternoon. Finish primer, I should say. No more prep sanding. Let's get this damn thing done. All right, so coat two just went on and I'm a little, a little angry with myself. Um, this coat went on a lot thicker and the roller sucked. Um, you can see it's obviously still wet and there's kind of some streaks because that paint is wet, wet and built up. And what I realized, what I accidentally did was you're supposed to mix one or two parts paint to one part converter. And um, when I was mixing it, I looked and I put eight ounces of paint and then I put eight ounces of converter and I was like, shit, um, that's not right. Cause that's a one-to-one -one mix. So I put more paint to get it up to 24 ounces and then I ended up, or excuse me, 20, like 22. And then I ended up putting my reducer in there and the, the cap full of the brush roller additive. It looks better now than it did 10 minutes ago because what I think was happening was there was too much converter 
and it was causing the paint that I laid down this morning to run or reactivate or whatever. So I have about eight ounces of paint left. I'm only gonna paint the back wall, the console, the front wall a third time because most of this is getting hidden by C-Deck and I'm pretty happy with how it looks anyway. I mean, there's plenty of shine over there. Um, so I'm gonna give this the full overnight treatment and let it 16 hours cure before I do the third coat and then sand the console, the front wall, the back. And I had some touch up back here which you can see, you can actually see the, it just doesn't look good. I'm kind of not happy with that. Um, so I may have to, I mean, I can sand and polish it, but I'm not gonna mess with this anywhere. I'm gonna let this dry. It just, uh, it's just super thick. I almost wanna roll it off with another roller. Um, but either way, I'll, I'll figure out what I wanna do here. It's, it's like when I first put the first initial roll on here i'm noticing that the reducer or the special brushing additive like this whole thing was just bubbles and then instantly it went boom and it got hard and it got flat and it got mirror so i think i need to mix either a little bit more longer initially or i need to add in a little bit more reducer later or the special rolling app rolling additive so that i get all those pops because once the bubbles come out of the paint it really, really fires off nice. So, uh, I mean, the color, I'm just absolutely in love with this, the white and the blue. It's it's perfect. I'm gonna have probably some uh, orange peel and a couple run lines because that batch felt a lot thicker than the batch that I did super first thing this morning. Um, so we're gonna just mix up four ounce batch tomorrow morning, four ounces of paint, two ounces of reducer, two ounces of converter. Uh, and then paint the console, the wall, and the wall, and then we're gonna just let it sit for a couple days and harden uh, before I sand it with 600, 600. I'm not doing 400, I'm doing 600 because I don't wanna take off much at all because it already looks really, really nice and I just want it to be super smooth. So that's what we're gonna do. I have two rollers, two pans, eight ounces of paint, just enough, I mean, like this is the end, the end of the skiff project and two coats of paint. And there you have it. A perfectly cut live well lid for a not so perfectly cut hole. Trimmed out, did a great job. Uh, that's gonna do the job just perfect. I gotta install some hardware, put the latch back in, but uh, let's put this boat back together. And that's all she wrote, folks. Uh, I've got the door over there. As you can see, the seat is in, prep for cushions. I already cut out the bottoms. Those are gonna be soft bottoms, so I'm really just using those for size. Um, I'm actually gonna have to cut out a little bit more of this opening to fit the, the door, but uh, we're painted. Uh, looks pretty darn good. I'm sure when I push it out into the light and go ahead and wash this thing, I'm gonna be mad at some areas, but it's done. The front wall looks great. The back wall looks great. The only thing I think I'm gonna have to do on the transom, as you can see when I painted, I mean, it, the you can you can definitely see the edge of that so i'm gonna have to probably use the polisher and uh i might even wet sand that with like some 2000 or something to get it smooth but there's like five coats of paint on the transom so shouldn't be an issue to, to clean it up and again it's just the transom um but overall gonna let this cure for a couple days install the door i got a live well lid that fits perfect acrylic the door's in, pop that door back in right here, and put the cup holders in, then we're gonna start running a couple of more wires, plumbing, and uh, yeah, the boat's done. I'm gonna end the video here, because the next video is going to be rigging the motor, the Tahatsu 60. So very excited to go pick that up this week, but we're gonna let this garage air out. I gotta put the rubber rail on still. So there's a couple more things to do, but she's water ready. <laughs>